Hi guys, welcome to my solo Warlock Prestige run of this week's Nightfall. I never put my weapons and armor up at the start of the video, so my apologies, but it's a very simple loadout. Stormcaller, top tree of the subclass, pulse grenade, empowering rift, center jump, the middle option for your jumps. I'm using Better Devils, Arc Mananan, Arc Curtain Call, all masterworked, Luna Faction Boots, I've got full uh, new monarchy armor on, so the armor's not really an issue, or the mods. And I'm used, I, my modifiers are Arc Singe, Heavyweight, and Momentum. The Nightfall specific drop this week is an exotic ghost called the Trichromatica. It is really, really disappointing that they put a, a ghost in as a Nightfall specific drop that doesn't have at least strike specific perks. I would prefer an exotic ghost that only drops in the Nightfall to have Nightfall specific perks. It makes it desirable. All it does is, is I think it's increased glimmer on Nessus, detects caches on Nessus, and drops gunsmith materials at an increased rate. Pretty uninspiring, but I am a collector, so I wanted it. Make sure you've done your high score run before you farm a Nightfall. That will increase your, your drop rate for the Nightfall specific loot and catalysts. And speaking of catalysts, I ho if you guys haven't checked out my exotic catalyst video, uh, it's up now. Go and give it a look. I'll actually link it to this video. And uh, if you enjoy it, leave it a like, same as this video. If you enjoy it, leave it a like. If you don't enjoy it, leave me a me leave me a comment or or don't. It's it's entirely up to you. Your viewership is is exactly what I'm looking for. It's all I need. So we take out the four ads that are on the platform we're on now, and then we cl clear up the rest of the ads down at the bottom. This nightfall is the entry level for solo nightfalls because there's three encounters. This is the first one. The second one is with the two uh, ultra cabal and the third one's the boss you can pretty much get past the rest of it so in this first encounter we've cleared all the ads i've pre-needed that area over there on reflection you probably would be better not throwing that grenade there and throwing it at the rock on the left where i'm aiming now when the big set of ads come around so we've took out the first hydra i preempted his shield so i never fired it when he was completely open i fired it just before he was going to be completely open so that when my rocket got there he was completely open. Now would be a good time to throw that grenade. So save your grenade for this part. Save your grenade for this throw. I wasn't too bothered about the grenade because I knew I could take them by just peeking over this left-hand corner. I give them a very small target to hit. And that is the basis of it. Don't give, don't do the ads work for them. Give them small or moving targets to hit when at all possible. So that's all the ads down. Very easy. Now we're just gonna we're gonna make it across to the next section and take out the two. We're gonna take the sniper out on top of the building, take the the elite cabal that comes with the arc shield, and then we start work on the the two ultras. This is a two phase boss battle. It's a pretty quick boss battle. I reckon I could have one phased them, but it's not repeatable. I could have done it, but it might have took you guys a, a, a you know a big number of runs. To actually repeat that, in which case it's not a guide. This is this can happen sometimes, you know. So this is a very repeatable guide. So we've made it across, jump down onto this next platform. Uh, for anybody that's like, how did you make it up on that plateau? It's about managing your boost. So do it, do it just a standard jump with no boost, and then boost to break your fall and move forward a bit, and then cut it off. Only let it boost for a second, if that. Less than a second. And then boost again to land on the platform. You can do it with the Hunter. It works exactly the same way. Save your boosts. Use them one at a time at the right time. So we take this sniper down. And then the, the Elite Cabal big boy will drop. I was very lucky with that rocket. Because he will move twice when he lands there. And the, he actually never managed to move out the way of my rocket. And then we can shoot this guy through here. It'll take out some of the ads. And it'll almost finish him in one hit. So, you know, again, whenever you go red, when at all possible, run away and get your health back. Don't stay in the fight because they're nearly dead. Because if you're red, you're nearly dead as well. So, this is exactly what I meant about preempting the ads movements. So, I thought this ad was going to come forward. And he didn't. So 
I fired where he, where I thought he was going to be. It doesn't always work. So with this boss, this uh, this ultra, try and wait until he engages with an enemy because he won't he won't duck out of that fight to dodge your rocket. And it, you know, you pretty much take him with a rocket, and the Mananum finishes him off. So collect your heavy ammo. If you don't, you need to beat the boss with heavy ammo. That's kind of a staple. It's kind of a standard for prestige nightfalls. For any nightfall, you need to get to the boss with full heavy. If you don't have full heavy, by the time you get to this point, don't sweat it. We haven't needed to use our super. I don't use my super in this full run. So we're going to take this exploding barrel. Take out all the cabal, leave two vex. As I say, don't sweat it if you don't have heavy ammo. Because in this section we're about to go into, there are two elite goblins and a shielded elite minotaur. Now, you won't always have to throw a grenade there. I only throw a grenade there if the enemies are on the platform. What you can do now is you can run around, get your health back. You can wait for your grenade to come back because with top tree of the Stormcaller subclass, your Stormcaller lasts longer if you fire it with a full grenade and melee charge. And it will give you health back. But you don't have to. Wait for them all to gather up, pop your super, kill them, you'll get a couple of heavy bricks. So what I do, because I've, I've got my heavy ammo, I'm all set, as I just run around and keep procking my momentum, there's no need for me to engage them. It, if I did engage them, I would just be doing it for the sake of having something to do. And I'm a big believer that guides should guides should feel like this is easy. They should look like that. But the only way a guide should look like that is if you've done it this way a few times. Not just, oh, well, this was a really good run. I don't do that. I don't go, oh, this is a great run. I'm going to put that up. I go, that was a really good run. Now let me see if I can do that again. So this isn't the first run I've done. It's not the first time I completed it. That's why when people say I couldn't do that run, I'm like, mm, I have actually, I've quality tested this. I've tested it to see if it's repeatable. Now, I jump off my sparrow here, just a, a little word on that. People might wonder why I've done that. Because I actually stopped my boost before I come off, so I wasn't going at full speed. So I was a little bit worried that I wasn't going to make the jump. But if you do boost straight off there, straight off, remember to break and then dodge right just before you hit the ground and you won't take any fall damage. Boost straight across here and go to the boss. So yeah, this guide is very repeatable if if you if you learn the different strategy. So strategy basically means how to how to approach each encounter, how to manage your ammo, uh, and how to use your position to your advantage. Then it's you'll be able to do exactly what I'm doing here. So take out the, the, the elite harpy first so that you can see where the heavy ammo drops. You don't have to, that's just why I always take the elite. Take the first harpy and drop the second harpy shield. Get into position and now you can take the harpy while you've still got momentum propped so that you're you're not getting damaged while you're up here. This boss becomes active the minute he's fully formed. There is no immunity. So what you have to remember is when you're firing rockets, as he's walking towards you, his position, be, you know, to you, he will move slightly left. So fire your rockets almost at his left armpit to get them to hit him dead on. So we've got those rockets off him. He's nearly dead. So when he drops down, don't be stupid like I was and expecting because he's headless. He's not going to perform like a boss. He will duck. He will move. Wait until he starts. He he gets into position. Then fire your rocket at him. In between firing the rocket at him, make sure you duck so that you're not an open target. Like I say, it's all about monitoring your managing your own position. You can't control the ads. You can only control you. And that's the run, guys. Two phase boss battle. Very simple. And now we're going to have a look at the Trichromatica Ghost. Like I say, very uninspiring. But as a collection, as a collector, I want all the Nightfall specific rewards. And I got it. And the, like I say, do the high score run first before you farm this or any Nightfall. And it, it increases your drop rate for the Nightfall specific rewards and the Catalysts. So I'll have a look at my Nightfall, my high score run. If I think it's up to the standards of the channel, I think it is. It's, it's not too bad. Then I'll put it up tonight. So... Thank you very much for your viewership. It's much appreciated. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Don't forget to check out my exotic catalyst video. 
and I will see you in the next video.